Welcome back to All Real Estate, All the Time with Whitney Nicely, where we teach you the ins and outs of buying real estate in Knoxville. Now, here's Whitney. Hello, and we're back with Julie in the studio this morning. We are talking about landlording, and we're going to be talking about some pros and cons. Obviously, I like quadplexes just as much as I like houses. Um, and if you didn't more know that. More than houses. More. Do, there's just more money in it. It's just more fun <laughs> if there's more money. <laughs> so um, I do have some good news. I'm going to be on TV today. That is awesome. I'm so excited. I'm going to be on WATE at 945. I don't really know what we're going to be doing, but I'm sure I'm going to be talking about real estate. I just want to make sure it wasn't the busted show. I mean, no, it's not the, <laughs> it's not the busted show. It's the uh, good morning Saturday, good, good morning Tennessee Saturday morning thing or whatever. And I'm really, really excited about it. So I've got to go get my hair and makeup done. And if you're listening to this on a replay, I'm sure you can get on Whitney Buys Houses Facebook page and see the replay like immediately. <laughs> I'm pretty good with those replays. Yes, very much. So this weekend is WATE, and then next weekend, I think I'm going to be on a different TV show in Knoxville, Saturday morning, and we're going to go out to one of my houses and talk about flipping it. Which house? The one on Valley View. I'm so excited. It's a two-bedroom, one-bath. It's super cute. Oh, it's so cute. But when I took the initial pictures of it, the hydrangeas were blooming, oh, and yeah. it was just a perfect... Cute. May morning, and yeah. now we're into August, and the blooms have died off the bushes. So, um, <laughs> Time to that, flip those. That's what we're going to talk about. Is this is a cute little house, and I can buy it, and I can do the lipstick on a pig kind of flip because it doesn't really need anything, but a little bit of paint here and a little bit of landscaping there. But you don't need to gut the kitchen. Those they've, are the best. They've already done that. Yeah. Um, if anything, you could paint the bathroom. It's this beautiful lilac color, but maybe you're a dude and you don't want a lilac bathroom. Right. So you could paint that and be good to go. I mean, it's a very short, simple weekender flip that shouldn't take a whole bunch of energy. That's fantastic. We're going to go out there and look at that house next weekend. Are you taking applications on this house already? <laughs> I am taking applications. Absolutely. I had a line of people wow. wanting to go see it. Apparently, I didn't price it high enough like you told me to. I told you. So You need a property manager, obviously. <laughs> I do. I'm like... <laughs> I really am really thinking about just handing it over to you. So tell me some of the pros to having a professional property manager handle my 15 houses. Well, if you don't want the headache of showing the property to a million people, running credit on a, half these people, making the decisions, dealing with the maintenance, dealing with the toys down the toilet, that's a good reason. That's a few good reasons to hire a property manager. Okay, let me let me ask you a question about that. You said that if I didn't want to show it to a million people, I mean, I know it feels like a million people are going through these houses. Yeah. But on average, about how many applications do you have on a house? If it's a good one, one. <laughs> okay, good. I The way um, my assistant and I do it, we schedule them in groups. And if somebody fills out an application, they can get us proof of income, copy of the driver's license, application fee, all of that. We'll go ahead and process it. And if it's good and they look like they're going to be good tenants, we're done. Okay. On to the next. So if I was a mom and pa landlord, you know, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but I keep hearing that there's landlords who don't run applications on their tenants. That is a bad decision. And I Gosh. think it's because they're not set up. They don't understand. They can see the benefits of it, but they're not set up for it. Like, I know when I run a credit application, I do credit. When I run a tenant application, mm -hmm. I do a credit check, a criminal history check, a past landlord experience, yep. and employment verification. Yes. Also in there, I get like three other different things. You know, if they're on the sex offender list or if they've had any kind of evictions in their past. Yep. Um, there's lots of other things to get thrown in on it. But the main things that I'm looking for and what, you know, I don't even really care if you have bad credit because you can improve your credit. I agree with that. And I think credit is the biggest joke we it have is. in the country right now because it doesn't. Medical bills. Oh, my gosh. It, it can destroy your credit. Yes. You get sick. You go to the doctor. You go to the hospital. You're late on your bill. Your credit's in the and tank. You, you better have it in 30 days. Otherwise, so, it's going on your credit. I, I don't really, it's not that I don't care about credit. It's just that I don't put as much stock in it as some other people do. And you can improve it. You can work on it. There's systems out there that you can improve it. But what I don't want to see on a credit or on a tenant application is if they've got, you know, five courthouse evictions. No. Whoa, I don't want to be number six. No. I, I actually, as a rule, don't 
typically take people who have evictions. Now, there are some strange circumstances. I actually just ran into some people who were evicted, and I'm putting that in quotations, because they rep they called a contractor in to repair their HVAC and turned in the bill to the landlord because they couldn't get him to pick up the phone, and he got rid of them. So, yeah. That seems kind of weird. People are weird. Okay. So the other thing that I'm looking at, when I look at these applications, you can tell me if you're wrong on this, I get two years of W-2s, two years of 1099s. I get so that I make sure that you have some sort of payment coming in and that on your, that's what else I get, a debt to income ratio to make sure that you're not yep. over leveraged trying to get into my rental house because the last thing I want to happen is you to get a flat tire and have to get a $200 tire and then you can't pay, pay rent. rent. Yeah. I no. don't want that. I want to make sure that yep. you can handle this barring any unforeseen circumstances. Because life happens. Life happens. I hope I don't get a busted tire. I hope the car doesn't break down. It's going to though. I hope, you know, you know, the kids field trip is already paid for, but if they get an opportunity, they want to go somewhere, then yeah, I want to be able to send them, but yeah. I don't want to have to miss rent for that. Right. Another thing I don't like seeing on credit is utility collections. Oh, you know, it's even, I think better than that is if they were late on their cell phone bill. Oh yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you're late on your cell phone bill, you're definitely going to be late on your rent because you want to be in communication with your friends because you got to find out what's going on on Friday night. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Tell me about the utility bills though. Why don't you like that? Well, I require tenants to have utilities in their name and if they've got a collection from KUB, they're, they have to pay that off in order to get utilities started in their name. So that's a no-go. I should think about that harder, I guess. I guess I haven't even seen that come up. I will tell you, one time I was renting a house to a lady and she didn't tell me she had a criminal history. And I usually like to just kind of know. Yeah. And a lot of times people just confessed every oh, yeah. ticket they've ever had. And that's, I like that when they do that. That's fine. But this lady didn't tell me anything. And she came back that she'd served a couple years for petty theft. Wow. Well. I'm okay with that. That's, yeah. you know, she was young and dumb and that's, that happens. That happens. That's how a lot of people get bad credit too. They're young yep. and dumb. But I, I, and I told her this, I explained it to her because she was wanting to do a rent to own on this. And I said, you know, you're, you're riskier than my other people. Otherwise you're better than right. the other people. And she offered, she, I didn't even say anything. I just said, this is what came up. And she said, well, what if I pay you more money per month? Yes. <laughs> okay. You're in. <laughs> when would you like to move in? Yeah, that's I'm sure. here. Yeah. But that's, that brings me around to my last point on this. I have an application because what I hate, and I got a lot of text messages like this this weekend. I don't know if this was just a good weekend for this. I, yeah, actually, it was a good weekend for this because you know what this past weekend was? It was the first weekend of the first of the month. So if you are living in a place, you're living in apartment A, and your rent's due on the 5th, Saturday and Sunday were like the 6th and 7th, so yep. you didn't pay. So you can send me, being Landlord B, a text message and be like, hey, I've got cash. I can move in this weekend. And I'm like, well, why yeah. do you have the cash? Is it because you didn't pay Landlord A and now you want to pay me? And that's exactly what their, it is. Yes. You know, rent? Their rent, yeah. No, 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 no. I have a process, and you're going to go through my process. You cannot just see it like it move in today. It's not happening. Yes, I, I've had um, quite an influx of this lately, and I, and I also think it's the time of the year. School's getting ready to start. People are trying to move in a hurry. I understand that, and I try to work as quickly as I possibly can to process applications because I know you're ready to move in. But there are other things going on behind the scenes. We're having it cleaned. We're having it maintenance. I've got to pull all these reports on you, and I have to make a good decision. I also have to go over this with the actual owner of the property to make sure that they're comfortable with the applicant. So having tenants harass me, <laughs> or not tenants, applicants. Yeah, they're not even tenants. They're yet. not even tenants. I owe them nothing. No. Harass me all weekend long. You're not getting in. You're not getting the house. And I, I like to say this too, to new landlords, if they're a PETA in the beginning, they're gonna be a PETA for the next year. And you're not getting your application feedback. No. Oh God. That is non-refundable. But I, I've already paid $200 at all these other different places and I can't afford to put another $100 down on the application. Well, you know what? When I 
bring in your application fee and your application, I actually go spend that money exactly on the credit bureau. That is not I, going into my pocket. No, there I, are fees I have to pay in order to pull these checks on I mean, you. I swear I think people would think I just look at it, get nothing back on it. I know. And I guess maybe people do that, and so they've got a bad taste in their yeah. mouth for it. Yeah, yeah. But I still don't understand why... They think they can get their application fee back. On I the, spent that money. I didn't keep it. On the on our applications, it says application fee non-refundable. Non-refundable. Period. From the minute you say go. Yes. <laughs> so I have some houses available, though. We mentioned the one that I'm going to take on TV, I hope, next weekend. And it's on Valley View. I've got one out in Powell. And I've got a gorgeous four-bedroom, three-bath well, three three house on Cherokee Lake in Talbot. So if you're looking for a fancy place, weekender, check out WhitneyBuysHouses.com. And this is Whitney Nicely with All Real Estate All the Time. If you need your driveway graveled, call my mom at Walker's Truck Contractors, 933-0225.